what we're now going to introduce is our L circuits. We've seen our C circuits. Now we get an R L circuit, which has uh, a source EMF very often. You can take, if once you get the current going, you can take out the EMF, the source EMF. Uh, but this has a resistor and an inductor in it. Now let's go ahead and derive the current as a function of time in an RL circuit. And you might guess, just like for an RC circuit, just like for a, an object falling through a resistive medium, we are going to use separation of variables for this. So let's start with the loop rule, Kirchhoff's loop rule for the clockwise path around this thing. What I've got is a EMF E time T equals zero, close that switch. And then I'm going to have some current I that's time dependent. Now, why is it time dependent? Well, first of all, what is the current at time equals zero right before I close the switch? It's zero. And this inductor would really like it to stay as that. So it's going to like push against this EMF. It's uh, called a back EMF, push against it, trying to keep it zero. It'll only succeed for exactly one instant. At time equals zero, the current will remain zero, but then it's like, oh, it's trying to push, it's given up, and eventually, at after infinite amount of time, it, it will give up, and the current will just be what finally? Well, if this is acting just as a wire, if that's just a wire, it'll eventually get to E over R, that'll happen at time equals infinity though, so that'll just, the current will just approach that. So let's go ahead and use the loop rule to derive this. We're going to start right here, and we're going to go clockwise up to there, and we're jumping up in energy, so that's going to be positive E, and then we're going through this uh, resistor from there to there as we walk around, and now we're losing energy, it's minus IR. And because this inductor is uh, a back EMF, it's going to oppose any change in current. Right now, as this current is trying to increase, it's going to say, no, I don't want the current to increase. I want it to stay the same. So it's going to push back with a back EMF of negative L di dt. And that gets us back around right to there. So we start where we ended, and we're back to zero. In other words, the total change from this point to this point in potential is zero. So now what we got to do is use separation of variables. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, I want to, in order to do that, I've got to get uh, all the I's on one side. To do so, I'm going to do this. I'm going to add L, D, I, D, T to both sides. Now I got that. Uh, and... I also want to get rid of this R right there because what I want to have is I just want to have I by itself because I'm going to want DI over some function of just I. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to divide both sides by R to give me E over R minus I equals L over R times DI DT. And if you'd like, you can use the little mnemonic of trying to keep the right side clean. So um, what we can do is, in a moment, I'm just gonna I'm gonna get rid of that. Multiply both sides by R over L. R over L times E over R minus I equals di dt. And now I want to separate my variables, so I'm gonna get this. DT goes on this side, so I'll keep it with the R over L. R over L times DT equals DI over E divided by R minus I. Now, what I seek on this right side, I want DU over U on the right side. And actually, this is probably the easiest one we've done because uh, what's on top, if, this, if I let U equals E over R minus I, what is DU? Well, if you don't know how to get that, you can just find DU DI, and that's equal to, oh, that cancels out, that just becomes a nothing, and you get negative one. And then you can see that 
du equals just negative di. So as you can see, it's almost already the way we want it. If this is u right there, the only difference of that, what's already on top of du and what, what's up there now is this negative sign. So all I gotta do is I put a negative sign right there and now I've got du over u, but I can't just put a negative sign on one side. I gotta do it over here too. All I did was I just multiplied both sides by negative, just a negative or negative one. And now I have this is du over u. And now what I can do is integrate both sides. So I get the integral of negative r over l dt equals the integral of di negative over e over r minus i. Now this is du over u as I've shown here. If u is equal to this, du is, is that, so I do have du over u. So now what I get is when I integrate, and I'm gonna put all the constants on the left side, I get r, negative r over r co comes out, it's a constant, negative r over l times t, and then I'm gonna just add plus c, and this, uh, this constant of integration is gonna hold all the constants of both sides. And on this side, what I have is ln of e over r minus i. Now, if you look at this, the maximum value that, keep that separate, the maximum value that this e over r minus i ever gets to, let's go back up to here, is going to be zero, that's, that's the minimum value rather, it never gets negative because after a long amount of time, that inductor is gonna stop fighting and it's just like a wire. After a long amount of time, this, this e over r minus i will be zero, but it never gets below zero. So in other words, I don't need my absolute value signs. And now what I get is, I'm, what do you do with this situation? You just raise both sides. Uh, e to that side equals e raised to that side, as we've done many times before. And I'm getting, uh, and re recall that when you have a sum in the exponent, that's like multiplying uh, e to the negative r over l t times e to the c equals, and e to the natural log of that is just e over r minus i. Okay, looking pretty good so far. I'm just gonna call this some other constant, let's call it k. So we get k times e to the negative r over l t, I'll let it, write, let it write it like that, equals e minus r over i. Now, I've gotta go to initial conditions to figure out what this constant k is. Well, at t equals zero, what is the current at t equals zero? Let's look at this. This thing was just closed at t equals zero. It just came from being open. And because this must be continuous, uh, I must be a continuous function, uh, you can't just jump up to an infinite current. Uh, this is at t equals zero, the current is zero. So that means that uh, k e to the negative r over l times zero equals e over r and the current will be zero. So what we'll end up with is this is just one, k equals e over r. So now we're really onto something here. What we have is e over r times e to the negative rt over l equals e over r minus i. So we found our constant, it's just e over r. And now I gotta put this all together. I just wanna solve for i. And if I just put i on the other side, I get i equals e over r minus e over r e to the negative rt over l. And uh, we finally get to the time dependent current is this constant e over r times one minus e to the negative rt over l. Now before we go on from there, what the heck is this e over r? e over r, let's look back up at what we had here, this drawing again. e over r is, after a long time, this inductor just becomes just like a wire and E over R is just the total current. It's the maximum current that this thing's gonna have. So I could write this like this. I equals I maximum times one minus E to the negative RT over L. 
and I want to write this one more time like this, I equals I max 1 minus e to the negative t over tau, which is the most general form. We keep seeing this every single time where tau equals what? What is the RL time constant? A little bit trickier this time because notice that it's t over tau. Tau has to be L over R for the, uh, the RL circuit. Uh, notice that tau would be, so this is for an RL circuit, uh, tau would be, as you recall, for an RC circuit, tau would be just RC. So very similar. Let's go ahead and graph this thing right here. Current versus time. At time equals zero, the current is zero. And what is the maximum current? It will approach E over R. When, when this uh, time goes to infinity, E to the negative infinity is zero. So this becomes one, you just get the I max, which is E over R. So our current is gonna look like this. It approaches that E over R, and we'll get there after infinite time. So this is the time constant right here for our circuit. You may recall that at one time constant, which is tau equals L over R, approximately what percent of this will it be at? It is about 0 0.63 times I max or E over R at that point right there after one time constant. Cool. Now let's take a look at what happens when we remove the battery from this.